Simone, welcome to Ask the Pros, where we speak to professionals, entrepreneurs like you, people in business like you, you know, they tend to tell their story, their journey. In a way, create a path for other businesses as well. You know, Strategy-wise, trying to show them, this is what I've done, this is how I've done, done my business, this is how I've grown my business, you know, success stories as well. And having a business or being an entrepreneur, you know, is not really a straightforward journey. There might be some obstacles or difficulties along the way, you know, so we also lo- love to hear that as well, you know, on, on the show, you know, and how you go through those difficulties as well, you know. So, and on this show, you know, we always start from the beginning. Start from the beginning means, you know, telling us who you are, you know, how you grew up, you know, how you really started, you know, as an entrepreneur. Yeah, sure. Well, thank you, for the, first of all, for having me on the show. Uh, I really appreciate it. And um, uh, I have, I think I, I had the entrepreneurial itch since I was very young. Um, I remember I was uh, 14 and uh, I had in my mind that I wanted to own a restaurant. Um, I have another memory of actually when I was five years old and uh, my cousin, me and my cousin, um, were spending a lot of time at uh, our grandma's place. And we were planning actually to build an hotel that we were all work there. It was called, uh, in Italian, it was called the, the Hotel Allegria, um, which means actually the hotel of, the, of joy. Um, and we started planning it. And uh, my cousin, uh, like I was going to work in the restaurant and my cousin used to like, was, was going to design it. And my other cousin uh, was managing it. Funny enough. I became then later a, a waiter working in managing restaurants. My cousin, which wanted to design the hotel, she became an interior designer. Wow. And my other cousin that wanted to be the manager, she became a manager. Yeah. It is insane. Wow, <laughs> and, great, right? man. It, how, how, would you, how would you create that? So it's amazing. Um, and, and that was, a, was where I think I had the itch. Uh, then um, my background was in the catering industry, so I started working in a restaurant as a waiter, and um, I loved it so much that I wanted to um, actually manage a restaurant. So I managed my first restaurant when I was 19, and then moved to the UK and uh, started managing the restaurant. Uh, um, and uh, I've been recruited to manage a restaurant, a Michelin star restaurant in London, uh, in Notting Hill. And from there, um, I remember that uh, there was um, my, uh, the, the owner of, uh, of the restaurant told me one day, I think you're wasted here. I think you can do more with your life. And uh, he started giving me some books. I see that you have a shelf behind you full of books. Uh, and <laughs> some of these books that many of these actually that you have there that I've read myself. And he started introducing me to the world of personal development uh, and just opening my horizons. And from there, I started attending seminars. And uh, I remember sitting there in the chair and I said, I want to do that. I want to be a speaker. I want to have uh, a coaching business. And, and that was the beginning. That was the beginning of the journey. I was 22. Wow, man. Well, what an amazing story, man. Such a young age, you know, started, started from the bottom, you know. Now, you, now you're on top, you know. But it, it's very funny how we, how we tend to, you know, you know, have that entrepreneurial you know, mindset while growing up, you know, and, but it's, it's out of curiosity for me now to ask, you know, it's apart from that, you know, were there other things that you were also interested in doing while, like, like growing up as a little boy? I remember that I wanted to become a lawyer at some point. I, okay. As a little boy, what I wanted to do was become an Egyptologist. I love the history. I love, still love history. And uh, I love in particular the history of Egypt. I fell in love with it and I started and I learned how to make words with the hieroglyphics. And I remember I started making like clay tablets at home with all, and I was writing the hieroglyphics there. Uh, and so the, that was the first thing which then I didn't pursue at all. Like, and uh, then at some point I wanted to become a lawyer, but then after I was, uh, when I was like 12, I didn't, then I was completely lost. I didn't know what to do until when, when I found my thing when I was 14. When I was 14, I started working in restaurants and I said, that's what I want to do. And uh, I've worked in uh, my career, actually, in the catering industry, started at 14, where all my friends were going to, were going to school and they were going to 
uh, you know, were going to parties sometimes or taking their, uh, their weekends off with their families. I wanted to work. I wanted to work every evening and I wanted to work every night, every weekend. And I started in the summer when I was 14 and then at 15, I was almost working every evening and every weekend and going to school during the day. And I loved it. I hated school. I didn't like it. I loved working in restaurants. I loved talking to people. And so from there, um, I, I just knew what I wanted to do, which was running restaurants, which is what I did. Until then, the next time, which is uh, what I wanted to run is a coaching business. And, and that's what I did. So it's literally, I had two, two careers, but I made them work well. <laughs> it's great, 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 great. But, you know, you were in the restaurant business, you know, worked hard, you know, go learn, learn new skills, obviously, you know, and you go introduced to reading, reading, reading books, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so you, you, you did all that. So what, what, what was the next thing in terms of, you know, after the restaurant business, you know, reading those books, you know, and I know you, you just, from there, you entered the speaking business, but you know, when you immediately left the restaurant, you know, what, what was the next thing you did? Um, I started uh, uh, working in, um, uh, so immediately I took a qualification in life coaching and youth coaching. That was because uh, I wanted to be qualified. I wanted to know what I was talking about. Um, and, you know, consider that I didn't have, other than working in restaurants, I had a, a diploma, but I couldn't do nothing with that and uh, nothing that I was interested in, really. And I didn't go to university. So I felt that I wanted to learn uh, something and to, in particular to learn what I did, the world of coaching. And I started working in schools. That was my very first uh, work as a trainer or as a speaker. Uh, I'm, I was a, a trainer for different organizations. And they were sending me to schools and that's how I learned how to actually speak in English. Because, you know, when I came to the UK, when I started my business, I was 22. It was two years after I came to the UK. So my level of English was very poor. I couldn't communicate. I could communicate in the catering language, but not in uh, business language, business language, not business language, definitely not have coaching sessions with clients, definitely not having the confidence to speak in public uh, with my level of English about with words that I never heard before. So it took me a good uh, two and a half, three years from uh, going, studying, um, delivering the sessions in schools, uh, getting my confidence up, um, and it was the first two, three years it was mainly about learning, learning, learning. And uh, I was still having my uh, catering job on the side and I was working part time while I was then building my contracts. And then my contracts ended up replacing my income. And then I started my first business, which then I closed after eight months because I didn't have a clue after how it works. So then it, it fell apart. <laughs> <laughs> and then I started, I met my business partner. And we started GTEx, and now we've been in business for eight and a half years uh, with, yeah. uh, with, with this company. Yeah, great, great, Simone, man. I love that, man. I love the fact that, you know, you didn't just quit your job. You, st- you still had your job, and you're building your, building your business to say your side hustle, you know, which, which is great. Because a lot of entrepreneurs and people that want to go in business, you know, they have, this, they have this idea that, you know, they just want to quit their job, you know, get rid of the job on the bridges and start the company. Well, but you know what? I did, I did that. I did that too. And okay. uh, it was horrible. <laughs> it was horrible because uh, after, I think after two months, I called my mom. <laughs> I kind of pay my rent. Can you send me some money? I called my dad. Then can you, can you pay me? Can you send me some money? I kind of pay my rent. Uh, then I ended up not having money even to pay my rent. And I said, you know what? That's crazy. I can't, I can't do this. So uh, it was just my ego that, you know, it says that, oh, you, and there are sometimes you listen to a lot of motivational talks and say, I can't burn the bridges, burn the bridges. But, you know, if you, you, you got to have a roof over your head. You got to have a roof over your head. Easier, gonna, easier said than done, you know. Uh, it, it is. And you know, there are a few people that make it work. They burn the bridges. And, but I started my business. I didn't know connections. I didn't know the language. I, I had, it was a total new industry, total new topic. So it takes time to get 
to a point where you are confident in what I was confident in what I was doing, and other people actually were confident in giving me any money, not not a lot of money, but even just some ten pound. <laughs> so <laughs> so that, that that was a, that that's when I went back and I said, no, you know what, I'm gonna keep my contracts. I'm gonna keep a part time job and. I kept them even after the business turned six figures. I still had my contracts. Um, and then there was a point when we turned, I think it was half a million that I said, no, I don't need those contracts anymore. <laughs> but until then, I still had a safety net because um, you never know. Yeah, yeah, you never know, man. You never know. Great. So, Simone, tell us, you know, why GTEx, you know? Why, what, what, why? Because, you know, as entrepreneurs, you know, when you want to start a company, you, you think of different names to call your company. You want to have like a perfect name. You want to have the name that, you know, people will reckon with, you know. Why GTEx, you know? Why, why, why mm. that name? Wow, that's a great story, actually. Um, my business partner and I met uh, and we started coaching each other because uh, we were both much younger compared to the other people that we were training with. We met uh, uh, when we were both 20, uh, 21, I think, or 22. And the people that we were training with, they were much older. Uh, they were generally like in their 35 or 40 or 50. So that's how we connected with some of the youngest people there. There were not many 20-year-old people interested in coaching. Um, and... Uh, when we decided to start a company, uh, we sat down and we said, okay, let's do something together. Because uh, I found a room where we could run some events. It was in a farm and I found this room for free. And so I called him and say, oh, I've got this room. What can we do? And that's what this beginning of a company. And so we started when we were finding the name, we did an exercise uh, that it was recommended by a friend of mine. And he said, uh, uh, one of the things that you want to do if you want to be successful in business is to create a business that aligns with your values. That is an extension of yourself, is an extension of what you believe in. And so because we were the two of us, what we did, we sat down and we wrote uh, all of our values. What are the things that are really important to us? And then we looked at the one that we had in common. And the values that we had in common were growth, was community, and it was actually getting things done. And that's how the company name starts, which is growing together exponentially, which then is abbreviation is GTEx, because it's a combination of our value and it's a reminder for us to always uh, um, do what we stand for, do what we believe in. And we believe in growth, we believe in doing things together, and we believe in putting the work in and uh, showing up. Uh, and that's where the growing together exponentially brand started. Great, man. Lo lovely story, man. Love that, man. Good. So growing this brand now, you know, you came up with the name JTEX, you know. So what, what, what were the things that you put together initially in the, in the beginning? You know, how, how did you um, to say to get things running? You know, what, what, what was the first things you did? Yeah, I, I learned a lot from other people. And uh, I remember uh, one of our um, early friends uh, was actually a speaker that came to one of our very first events that we did. And they mentioned two things. It's like, if you want to be successful in business, forget everything and you got to focus on two things, sales and marketing. That's it. All the rest is fluff. All the rest is noise. Create your product, create your service, and then focus on sales and marketing, sales and marketing, sales and marketing, because that's what you need. That's what you need at the beginning. All the beginning, all the rest is noise. And uh, that's what we did. We focus on sales and marketing. We were uh, going everywhere that we could. We were talking about our events. We were inviting people consistently to our events. Um, we were networking like crazy. And that was our form of marketing. We started doing a lot of social media marketing. And then we kept selling. We kept inviting people for consultation and uh, then uh, uh, selling our services there. And that's how we kickstarted the company. And for the first four years, we only did basically sales and marketing and building our community. And that's what made it work. I think that a lot of people, uh, they get, uh, it's easy to get confused because there are so many things to do in business, right? Um, and most of the time, like I was lucky that I had a business partner, but he still had to work full time because GTEx couldn't pay both salaries. I could pay myself like 500 pounds a month at the beginning, but uh, he needed, because uh, um, I 
didn't have to pay for my rent because I negotiated my rent with my landlord and I wasn't paying it. And that's another story. But the uh, uh, my business partner needed to work because GDS couldn't support his salary and my salary as well. And so sales and marketing for the first four years, up until then, uh, my business partner, Ben, then was able to uh, come full-time in the company. And to give you some perspective as well, like I've been full-time in the company since the beginning uh, because I was running, I was uh, uh, driving this side of the business more and I had more time and also I had less living expenses than him. Um, but he quit and started jobs four times. So he quit job saying, thinking we can make it. And then we went back to job. Uh, that was for the first four years. Uh, every time we thought we have this, now we can finally be full time, both in the business. We had a bad month or a couple of bad months. And so that's, that's the journey, man. Yeah, yeah it's good. I, I love the fact that, you know, you're giving this back, this back end story, you know, telling us the, the other side of the business, because a lot of people don't, they don't tend to, Tell you the other side of the the other side of the business. Do you understand? They, they just they just give you the glamorous side. You know, I'm six figures. You know, I'm I'm earning this. I'm earning that. You know, but they don't tell you the shitty part of the business. You know, and I'm <laughs> <laughs> and I'm and I'm happy and I'm glad that you're giving us that 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 side of the story as well, which is great. Cassiana, if you want to live an easy life, don't start a business. Uh, that's the reality. If you want to live an easy life, have a good job. That's his life. <laughs> starting a business you need to have a deeper reason why either you need to love business and you just love business because and that's what you love and so that makes you go through it but otherwise uh, uh, there is going to be more tough moments than uh, than successes every day you have something around the corner and everything is on you at the end of it like it's your business so every responsibility is on you uh, so that's, um, yeah. I think it, it, being an entrepreneur becomes glamorized right now in our society. I understand. I totally understand what you, I totally understand what you're saying because, uh, for instance, for example, you using me as, as an example, you know, I have my nine to five job, you mm -hmm. know, in the construction industry, which, which I love, you know, I love, you know, doing what I do, you know, but I also have this part of me as well, trying to build, you know, my business which is interviewing, mm -hmm. podcasting, and a host of other things as well, you know, try, trying to do yeah, that as well, yeah. you know. If, if I should just give my job up and say I want to focus on that, you know, every, every other thing is going to suffer because uh, I also got family as well. I need, to, I need to pay the rent, you know, the family needs to eat, you know, I need mm -hmm. to take care of other stuff as well. So there's, there's, no way, there's no way I'm going to give up my job and I will just say, you know, this is what I want to do. I love, my, I, love, I, love, I love the business, you know, because yeah. you, 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 you end up not doing the business. No, I agree with you. I agree with you. And, um, and, and also I think that everyone has, uh, you know, every situation is different. That's why I think it's not smart to just watch a video and thinking uh, this is the way. But unfortunately, many of us do that just because we don't know anything different. You know, we see the speaker on stage, we see the person there on YouTube, and we think that they know what they're talking about. And they might know what they're talking about, but the, the thing is that everyone is a different journey. You know, there, I met people that burned the bridges and they had their mortgages on the line and their family on the line, they made it work. I also met people that burned the bridges and their family on the line and the mortgages on the line. They lost their houses and lost their families. <laughs> And I met people that uh, uh, had uh, um, uh, created a business while having a job and they were never be able to quit their job. And I met people that uh, had a business and have a job and they were able to quit their job. So everyone has a different journey. And I think that the most important thing that an entrepreneur can do is to learn how they operate, is to learn what they need for them to be the most productive or um, to have what they needed to be the best business owners. Because I'll give you an example. Me and my business partner, we are very different. Um, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I can take a way bigger risks. I can be the kind of person that says, let's quit everything. Let's put all our money there. Let's I can be that. And if, for example, there is not much money in the account, 
or we are having financial troubles in the company or there is not a, we, we didn't have a couple of great months. I become fired up. I become the sales machine. I can have my highest, the best month of the month after. While my business partner, if there is not much money in the account or we have problems in the company, he's frozen. Like he, he, he can't operate much because it gets him too much. On the other hand, when the company is going well and we have a lot of money in the account and so on, I get complacent. So I start relaxing. I don't do the things that then bring all the bigger revenues. While him, on his end, because everything is covered, the company is going well, he's fired up. And so it's important to understand how we operate so then we can give to ourselves what we need to be the best that we can in our, in our businesses. Yeah, from, from what I can see, that's a, that, that's a very good, good mix. You know, you and your partner is a, is, a, is a very good match, you know. But, you know, I know you're in the speaking, in the speaking industry, right? And, mm -hmm. and with COVID now, you know, a, a lot of things are, you know, are shut down, you know. How do you conduct your business these days, you know? You know, regarding to not being able to be in a, in a, in a close environment with everybody, you know, gi giving your speeches out as well, you know. So how, how do you conduct your business these days? Uh, I pray every day. <laughs> nah, I'm joking. Uh, business actually is going well, fortunately. But uh, I pray every day because uh, I want to go back to live rooms. So I'm a, sta I'm a performer. I'm a stage animal. I love being on the stage and I love being with people. I'm Italian as well. I love hugging people. I love meeting new people. I love talking to people. That's why I loved working in restaurants. Because I was talking to people every single day. I was working on the floor, not in the kitchen. Because that's what I love doing. And so I miss, I really miss. We were running, a, I was speaking at 200 events every single year. I did a thousand events in five years. That's my life. That's what I love the most. That's where I get my biggest buzz and my biggest thrill. And it's missing right now. So I can run an online business. I can do all these things. So the business is going, still, is going well. Um, we managed to move uh, all our training. We've done more than uh, 100 trainings a year with our company. We managed to move them and transition them online. We found a really good way to keep our clients engaged. So on that side, uh, moving online worked well. Also because uh, it's not that I just started doing online stuff now. I've been doing online marketing and running online courses for the past six years. So it was literally switching things more on. And... Uh, um, brainstorming more creative ways but other than that the switch was quite was was very quick because i've done all these past six years of already building those skills and already running online training but i miss it i miss yeah. it and um, i'm looking forward to be back on stage and meeting people in person and not just through a zoom call <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Simone, man, absolutely, man. You just mentioned about, you know, you love meeting people, you love hugging people, you love, you know, being in room, in the same room with people, you know, and having that conversation, you know. When it comes to building relationships in business, you know, how important is that? How, how important is that, you know, key factor in building a business? Uh, it's crucial. It is absolutely crucial. Um, there is a friend of mine, Kristen O'Connell. Uh, she built a, a seven-figure business in, a, in the recruitment industry um, uh, by creating advertisement for job boards. Uh, uh, it's called Superlative Recruitment. Uh, great person. And uh, she talks a lot about, like she built a seven-figure business just based on relationships. Just to get, she didn't never do any paid advertisement. She didn't do any fancy marketing strategy. It was meeting people and building relationship with the right people. That's it. Talking about seven figure a year business. So building relationship is crucial. If I'm thinking about every single speaking engagement I have, I, I had the pleasure to um, did ev do events with Les Brown, with uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, with Dr. John DeMartini. Um, and they all came because of relationships that I had with event organizers. Um, not because, uh, I mean, I'm a good speaker, but there are a lot of good speakers out there, right? Uh, I'm a good podcaster, but a lot of good podcasters out there. So, uh, the relationships is, is the key, is the key to everything is the key to joint ventures is the key to opening doors. Uh, um, everything you do is through relationships. So 
I'm a big believer in building relationships that are genuine with people that you want to do business with, with people that you like. It's not just a relationship for the sake of a relationship because you want to gain something, but it's a relationship where you got a mutual benefit and you both want to spend time together and sky's the limit. Good, good, good. See morning, man. Love that, man. You know, beauty relationship is key. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm on with that hundred percent, you know, but in, in terms of, you know, building a brand, you know, doing the right things as well, you know, when it comes to branding in business, you know, what, what does branding really mean to you? Because you, we, can, we, we can say a lot of things like, oh, I, I want to build my business. I, I, I have a mentor, you know, I have this, I have that. I want to put things in place, you know. But I think the underlying thing here, you know, that I'm trying to get out of you because I asked this question yeah. in, in all that of my shows as well, in interviews sure. as well, you know, branding. What does branding mean to you, you know, in creating a business? Um, branding is uh, the core of the business, I think. Um, cause there are different level of branding. I mean, um, a brand, a real brand is something that people can identify with. It's something that people want to be part of. Um, it is more than a, than a business, a brand, a brand is, uh, it, it connects with you on a deeper level and you want to be part of that thing. So for us in this in the business training sector is people that they want to be part of a community. Uh, they have integrity as a value. Uh, they want to help and support each other. So these are the, the values that we have and they want to keep working and they want to become really great in their field. And so uh, all our brand that expresses those feelings because we want to attract people that believe in that, they believe in supporting each other, they believe in helping each other and they believe uh, into revolutionizing also the way, like the, the, the training industry and they believe into revolutionizing the way people learn because that's what I'm passionate about, is passionate about education. Um, having said that, there are many ways like a brand is not a logo a brand is not a, a something an image that you put on your website is the feelings that you give to people to get them to say i want to be part of that i can see that by being part of that it talks to me and it makes me feel better as a human being on the other side don't focus on branding too soon because what happens is that a lot of people, they use branding as a distraction. As I said at the beginning, the most important thing to do at the beginning is marketing and sales. It's not branding. Because uh, branding represents a sense of identity. And for the first three years of finding your business, three to five years, you are finding your sense of identity in your business. The business is finding a sense of identity. It's a baby. And so unless you're already experienced in business, like if you're experienced in business and you know what you're looking for, that's different. That's a different game. You already have the skills, you already have the people and so on. I, I can start a business right now and do in two months what I did in five years with GTEx because I have the experience of the five years with GTEx. But if someone is starting out, you're still finding yourself, you're still finding your identity. So it's difficult to communicate that identity with your brand because it's not formed yet. Um, that's why I say take it easy, focus on branding later on is important, but well, not at the beginning. Well, 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 Simone, you know, people would argue that, you know, if I'm, if I'm creating a business or a brand, you know, I want to, I want to I wanna have my logo, you know, I want people to, to, to see my logo and, and they know that it's me, you know, what, what, what would you say to that? Cause I, I know you see it differently, but, but people would argue and said, you know, no, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with what you're saying, you know. I want a logo. I want to start with a logo. Uh, a logo. A logo is important of a company, but as I mentioned, a logo is not a brand, right? A logo is a, a visual element of your brand, but your logo, your pictures, uh, everything else, like a, the real meaning, the real sense of a brand uh, is a, is a feeling, is a sense that you get. It's not even, is and the visual element, they are there to reinforce that sense that feeling that's what they are so yes go ahead put your logos everywhere like i had a logo we change our logo four or five times um but what i'm saying is that don't spend too much time or money or attention developing it at the beginning we have a 
we had a very crap logo up until we made a quarter of a million. But if we were to waste our time just looking at how fancy can we look instead of doing the most important thing of a business, which is serving your client and onboarding more clients, serving your clients and onboarding more clients, serving your clients, onboarding more clients. That's how the business stays up. And then the brand and all the fancy stuff, they can come later. That, that's what I believe. Yeah. Uh, so some people can argue and they might believe in different <laughs> ways, but that's what I believe. Yeah, absolutely. I love that, man. Uh, we've, we've spoken about relationships in business, branding, you know, but as, as a speaker, you know, and, and someone that's so sort of like in a room with people and trying to, you know, have that relationship with people, you know, what do you do differently? You know, if, I, if someone is looking for a speaker, you know, and they, they go, on, go on the web, you know, search everywhere, looking for a speaker to come, to come on my show, or my program, you know, mm-hmm. what is that thing that you do differently that will make people to come to you? Oh, that's a great question, um, which actually is uh, go, it relates to branding. <laughs> now we are going, we are going back to branding, and it took me uh, seven years on the stage to figure this out. But uh, every speaker will have something that they want to be known for, and that they are different, that they are um, that they are unique about. So, for example, if someone wants to hire a speaker, which is uh, you know connecting on a deeper level and sharing a story that can make people cry very emotional that's not me that's not me i come in and i bring the party we're gonna have a great time i'll make you laugh i'll make you understand this complex uh, business uh, strategies uh, in a very simple way that's what i'm really good at taking what's complex and make it simple so that people can understand. And I'm going to bring music. I'm going to bring my basketball and I'm going to bring the show. So there is going to be an element of show. There is an element of learning complex things and making them simple and an element of let's have a great time. Let's have a laugh together. And so that's, that's what I bring. That's what I bring as a speaker. And that's why people hire me. And that's why companies hire me or event organizer hire me. Um, and uh, that's my identity uh, as a speaker. That's my brand. Good, good, good. Love that, man. Well, having, having said that, you know, as an entrepreneur, starting up as a little boy till now, you know, what is the best advice that you've gotten so far? Uh, best business advice uh, is being given to me by an Hungarian man, which uh, I was working with. And I know at the beginning I mentioned that I didn't pay my rent. Um, so when uh, there was a time where I was supposed to move with my girlfriend and so I left my house, I didn't have much money in my account and we're supposed to move to another city in the UK to Exeter. Um, and, uh, uh, at that point, my, uh, the night before going there, we split up. So now she was already there. I didn't have a place to stay because uh, I left the room that where I was staying before. And so I went to this uh, organic food store uh, where I was going and buying my fruit and vegetables. And uh, it was owned by this Hungarian man. And he said, you know what, don't worry. I got a place in my house. We were, I was shop- been shopping there for a couple of years, so I knew him. And he said, don't worry, I got a place in my house, stay there, and then when you have the money, you can pay. Now, he had, uh, he is a genius because he built this shop uh, in South London, which uh, he built between a pub and the railway station. So there was a hole. And with his hand, he put pallets together and he built this like shop that became from nothing, one of the 10 most loved shop in, shops in London, uh, given by timeouts. Now, I'll get to the, to the learning point because the best give business advice that he gave me is what helped him build his businesses, which is uh, uh, build a community and your community will build your business. Absolutely. Build a community yeah. and your community will build your business. So it's not, the business doesn't start first. A lot of people do now this the other way around. They build the business and they say, how can I build a community around my business? No, that's different. I build a community and then build your business around the community. And uh, that's what we did. We've been building communities from uh, the very first day of GTEx, getting people together, which is part of growing together exponentially, getting people together, getting people to connect. And the community is core of everything we do. And, uh, and 
communities are great because uh, on a on a practical level like on a business level you never run out of clients clients come back and buy from you over and over and over again because they're part of the community they want to stay in the community so we never have a problem finding clients we just go back to our community so on a practical level that's why it works and on a personal level um, you can see the impact that you're making and you're not just the only as a business you're not on the only person who makes an impact in their lives with your product or service but they are making impact in each other's life so now because you create that platform for people to connect your clients will have even more results or a better experience because it is not just between you and them is everyone and that's that's the best business advice build your community your community will build your business I love I love that advice, Simone. I love that advice, man. I'll, I'll definitely I'll definitely hold on to that, you know. And and you know, very great great advice, great advice, you know. Well, in the, in the cause of your of your of your of your um, speaking engagements, you know, in the, in the cause of building your brand and building your company, you know, did you ever do shows for free? Oh, I do things for free right now. <laughs> I always do stuff for free. Absolutely, stuff for free are brilliant. Um, it is a way to build a relationship, right? Um, I did it when I was working in a restaurant, I did more than probably a hundred, more than a hundred shifts for free just to work in a restaurant because I wanted to learn something. And I was going in that restaurant, which I knew it was uh, very renowned or there were some great uh, um, restaurant managers. And I say, can I work for you for free for a week and learn from you? Uh, I do this right now. I found people that uh, uh, I want to learn from and say, what can I do for you? I'll work for free for them. Um, I, if I want to access a certain opportunity and I'll do that for free. So I think free is, uh, is underrated and free is, it works if you have a strategy. If you just do a lot of free stuff for the sake of free stuff, no, that doesn't work. Now you're wasting your time. But if you're doing free stuff because you want to learn something, you want to connect with someone that helps you get closer to what you want to build. If you're doing things for free that puts you in front of the audience that of your ideal clients, absolutely. I'm always going to get something. Um, so yeah, stuff for free. Absolutely. Big fun. Great, great, great. Love that. Because a lot of people, a lot of people say, oh, do you know what? I can't work for free. You know, it's my time. I want to get paid, you know, which, which I think is ludicrous because I think for, for you to learn, learn things, you know, that for me, I'm, I'm on you on this as well. You know, I, I think you need to do a lot of stuff for free, you know, like, and like you said, again, you have to have a strategy behind that as well. You know, not, nothing, nothing bad, you know, but of course you, you want to meet new people. You want to learn new skills, you know, and that's why you do stuff for free. That's a very good point. Like, for example, I don't, I, so I don't do stuff for free for my clients. I mean, I can do free training or free seminars, but these are like marketing. So it's not like it is a, it's free for them. But for me, there is a marketing strategy behind it. What I do for free is to get access is to connect with people, is to do something that I want to learn. So if someone wants to work with me, they gotta pay me. <laughs> like I spend time and I did, so at the beginning actually I did free, a lot of free sessions. I did more than 200 free sessions at the beginning, but because I needed to be good, I needed to have the skills, I needed to have the testimonials. So my payment was the practice that I needed, were the testimonials that I needed to build my business. This was my payment. But then arrive to a point where I'm like, no, I'm good at this. I'm only going to charge to clients. But then I'll do other things for free to get access to other places. So that's a good distinction. Thank you for, for helping me clarify that. Yeah, great, man. Love that. So if someone comes to meet you now, you know, and say, Simone, you know, I, I've, I've, watched, I've watched your speaking engagement. You know, I love what you do. You know, I, I'm totally down with your, your company, every, everything with you, you know. And I also want to do what you're doing as well, you know. What would be the advice to that person? Ah, well, the first one is buy one of my programs. <laughs> they will help you. <laughs> great, that will be great. the first one. <laughs> uh, the second piece of advice uh, is to start. Just start. A lot of people, they, um, they just think too much. They think too much. Um, if, I, if I had to look at where, where I started, uh, that's where I was myself. I looked at someone on stage. I looked at coaches and I said, I want to do that. 
I was 22. Who, who hires a 22 year old life coach? <laughs> so I, I, there is no life experience there. There was very little that I could give, but I started anyway. I said, okay, well, who can I help young people? So I started working with young people in schools. I could give something to them. I had more experience as them. So um, I wouldn't be where I am if I didn't just say, let me start. I did, uh, I did speaking engagements where I wasn't ready or I, wa I wasn't known. And it was like in a pub or like it was like a, an open session where someone could go there and speak. I want to be a speaker. Great. Do open sessions. Like, see, um, there are some networking events where you can have like a five minute presentation. That's where I started. I want to be a speaker. Great. Where is the platform? So just think less and, and do more. <laughs> that, that would be my advice. Yeah, I love, I love that advice. You know, it's, a, it's a great advice. But, you know, people will say, oh, do you know, um, I, ha I have the fear of failure. You know, like, like some people, they will say, oh, do you know, I, I, I don't want to fail. You know, because of failure, you know, I don't, I don't want to start. Because you, you, would, you would say, oh, well, what if I start and I fail? You know, where would that get me? You know, what would you say to that? So to people that would say, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to start because I, because I don't, want, I don't want to fail. You know, but they, 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 don't, they don't realize that, you know, there are, so, there are so many ways to failure. There are so many things you can take for, from, 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 from failing, you know. Sure. But what, what would you say to that, you know, to people that would say, you know, I, I, I listen to this guy, he's great, but telling me to start means, you know, I might fail, you know, and I don't want to fail. You know, what would you say to that? Great. Don't start. <laughs> don't start if you don't want to it means that it's not that important for you right uh, we will always do something things that are important to us and uh, um, as you mentioned yes failure is part of the process but if you don't want to fail don't start that's it like no one is forcing you at the end of the day I, it's you could you make the decision i want to do this so if you want to do it do it it's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be difficult. There are going to be, you need a support network around you. I'm not saying it's easy, but uh, if you have that relationship with failure, you've already failed. Um, that's the biggest failure, I think. Uh, so don't, don't even start. Don't even bother. That would be <laughs> what I will say. Yeah. Yeah. I love, I love the way you've, you know, the, the way you started your entrepreneurial journey, you know, started from the boy, you know, trying to do all stuff, doing things for free, you know, which, which, which is great, you know, and I also love what you're doing as well. You know, what you're doing right now, you know, you're doing an amazing job, you know, but in terms of leaving something for the listeners, you know, for the viewers, you know, what will be your last take on this for them? You know, something that you want them to take away from this. What will be the last thing? Uh, yeah, so um, if I have to leave you with one, one message is uh, perfection is the killer of dreams. Perfection is the killer of every dream. Uh, perfection is an illusion. It doesn't exist. That's why a lot of people think they fail because they just compare the results that they get with their idea of what they should be. That's what failure is at the end of the day. It's a, it's a perception. And so... Per perfection perfection is a killer of every dream because it doesn't exist and the, the dream happens while you're doing what you're doing that's why i think it's so important to do something that you love because you're never going to get the results that 100 percent that you want like or not not never but there is a chance of a million that you get exactly what you want in that specific time frame but what you have is and you have no control of what results you're going to get. You can do your best. You can do your best to get those results. But it is about, it's up to you to show up every single day because the perfection is the killer of every dream. Um, I play, uh, I'm, I'm quite short. I'm five, like five foot five, right? And, uh, but I play basketball and I play in the professional league in uh, the second division in the UK. Wow. And when I joined and I started playing basketball, actually, when I was 28. So four and a half years ago, I started playing basketball. It's quite late <laughs> to start a sport. <laughs> but I love basketball. So all I'm interested in is in playing. What I'm interested in is becoming better at basketball. Then led me to meet the right team, to meet the right coach. It led me to uh, have those opportunities. And I'm not the best player in the team. Uh, actually, I'm one of the worst players in the teams at the moment. 
uh, in the team I'm playing in, if I'm going to other teams, I can be a really good player. But in the team where we are playing in, I'm one of the worst players at the moment. And uh, if I were to wait for the perfect moment where I can be the perfect player, when is that ever going to happen? Play every single opportunity, play every single day, do the best I can to improve my shot, to improve my dribble, my passing, my speed, my, uh, my stamina. And uh, that's why I'm never going to be the perfect moment. You start and you do it. And um, perfection is the killer of dreams. Yeah, yeah. Practice, practice, practice. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah you know I, I love i love this conversation you know it's, it's been it's been it's been you know amazing you know it's been amazing and i'm and i'm having lots of takeaway as well you know and if someone wants to get in touch with you you know simone where, where would be the best place for them to get in touch with you uh best place to get in touch with me is um uh in my personal website which is uh simone v so s-i-m-o-n-e-v dot co uh, it's a new website that we uh, have built recently. So um, that will be the best place to reach out, simonev.co. Um, and then there are a lot of resources. So there is a, a lot of free trainings that we are running, which you can download. Um, there are resources if you want to, if you're already in business and you want to be more visible um, and uh, expand your audience, there are resources for that. Um, if you are starting out and you want to create products and services, for example, we have resources on helping you create products and launching them and do product launches. Um, and then if you want to work together, there is also a, an opportunity to book a call. So you can have a chat and see how we can work together. And uh, as long as you have skin in the game, as long as you are committed, do the work, show up um, and want to be part of a community, so the other thing then definitely we can see how we can help you and support you in that. Great, great, great. Community, man. Being part of the community is key, man. That's, that's, my, that's, my, that's my take from, from, from this, man. Being part of the community is key. You, know? you have to build that community as well. You know? Simone, I love what you do. You know? I, I, I love every bit of you know, your company, your, the, the, the way this conversation has gone. You know? I, I love it. You know? And I'm, I'm grateful that you, know, you were able to come on the show you know, I'm, I'm happy that, you know, we're, you're able to give me your time as well, you know, which is, which is totally great, you know, and I, and, I, and I love it, man. Thanks for coming on the show. Uh, thank you, Cassian. I really appreciate the invitation and thank everyone for listening. Yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks.